Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well, welcome to another video. It is Friday morning the 12th of April and we are sticking with the Sebastian Rogers case today. We're now into day 47 of the search for 15 year old Sebastian who is missing from his home in Hendersonville in Tennessee. In this video we're going to talk about Seth Rogers, Sebastian's biological father, taking a polygraph for Nancy Grace. We're also going to talk about other autistic children who have run away without shoes. Let's go. This screenshot has been doing the rounds for the last few hours now. And I'm not sure on what platform Seth is talking. Is that Discord? I don't know. But people are asking him questions about the polygraph. If you remember, when uh, Seth Rogers was on Nancy Grace, she asked him if he'd taken a polygraph. And he said no. The TBI didn't need him to take one because they knew exactly where he was. Seth, you see, has got the best alibi ever. He was on a 12-hour night shift in Davidson County Jail. So he was in a jail the whole night. The whole night, the 25th of February into the 26th, Sebastian's thought to have gone missing between midnight and 6am, roughly. And Seth only finished his shift at 7am. By the time he got to his vehicle, about 7.20, there was a call and a text from Chris Proudfoot, Sebastian's stepfather, saying to contact him. 911 emergency. Seth had been in jail, working all night. So he was on camera the whole night. Inmates can vouch for him. Other corrections officers can vouch for him. Well, that doesn't stop people speculating that it's Seth that's responsible for the disappearance of Sebastian. It can't be him. However, Nancy Grace said, well, would you take one? And he said, yeah. So, dutifully, he turned up and took his polygraph. Now, this is highly unusual. So let's read down. I did show up for my poly and took it. TBI advised me to be careful taking the poly, but they didn't tell me that I couldn't take it. Presumably the TBI would say something along those lines, maybe because they're not in control of who the polygrapher is or the questions that are asked, I don't know. They called me and asked why I was taking it. I told them I was taking it because Mrs Grace asked me to. Now this is the really weird one. So he did take his poly, but fell asleep several times during it. So I don't know how I did yet. Fell asleep several times in his polygraph. I know they're long and somewhat monotonous, but fallen asleep. Now we do know he's on medication for his injured shoulder. He already got a shoulder problem, I believe, and he fell I think during one of the searches for Sebastian and it's made it worse. That's why he swings his arm around a lot and holds his arm above his head because it eases the pain in his shoulder. He is on medication. He did say on one interview, I think it might have been one of the ones on the Pascal show, but don't quote me on that. And he said he was taking gabapentin. Now, gabapentin is not an opiate. He's not on opiates at all. Gabapentin is prescribed for nerve pain, nerve damage. I know this because I've been taking gabapentin since 2013. A long time I've been on gabapentin. I used to be on three 600 milligram tablets. I can't remember. A day because I've got two collapsed discs and some spinal damage. So I was in a lot of pain. And that's why I was prescribed gabapentin back in the day. Now, my dose is reduced now because my spinal pain can be controlled with two tablets a day. So better to take two than take three, isn't it? Better for your kidneys, better for your liver, etc., etc. Anyhow, when I first started taking them, you've got to build up a tolerance. So you take one for the first few days and then you take two, blah, blah, blah. And I do remember... When I first started taking them, they used to make me feel kind of really spaced out. They don't anymore because I've got the tolerance. So I can take a gabapentin in the morning and be absolutely fine. There's no drowsiness. There's no 
spaced out nurse. Anyway, he fell asleep several times. Now, they do normally tell you not to take your medication for like 24 hours, if you can help it, before taking a polygraph because medication can affect the result. If you're drowsy, of course it can affect the result. So I find it really strange that they've let him take this polygraph in being on medication. Unless they did tell him not to take his medication for 24 hours and he fell asleep regardless. I don't know. But apparently, Nancy Grace isn't happy. Now, this screenshot, I can't vouch for the accuracy of this. The name on this has been scribbled out. Could be anybody talking, but let's have a read. And this is just some random person. So this is pure hearsay. All right. We had a PTO. I don't know what that is. This evening, one of mom's, her daughter, is an intern with one of the shows, works with Nancy Grace. Well, she said that room around the office is that Seth failed his polygraph. Total fail. And now Nancy's team is doing damage control. And Nancy was cussing because she's in a pissy mad mood. She finally told them polygraphs are not reliable anyways. So we'll have to be fair and say it's inconclusive. She said Nancy's team were pretty mad. They don't like him because he was rude to them not long ago. So they refused to cover for him. Well, I mean, if there's any truth to that whatsoever, that Nancy Grace is pissed because Seth failed his polygraph, they might want to look at the fact that he fell asleep several times. I mean, this might be completely untrue. This is pure hearsay. I thought it was interesting anyway. So let's wait and see what Nancy Grace says about this polygraph. Will, will it just get forgotten? Will she never mention it? Don't know. He can take another one, of course. One where he doesn't fall asleep. So, hmm, interesting. All right, let's look at this. Lots of people are saying that Sebastian would never run away without shoes. His parents have said it. His mother said it. His father said it. His mother, however, changed her tune. In a later interview, she said that, well, he did go outside in just socks. She used to have to tell him, you know, to put shoes on when he went outside. Seth, on the other hand, says he would never go out without shoes because of a situation that occurred. He stepped in a nest of fire ants and, um, yeah, painful. So he never goes without shoes. Now, I've said that if he was angry, he might just run and not care that he's not got shoes on. I've also said maybe he did have shoes. Maybe he had a pair of shoes his mother wasn't aware of. His chore is to take out the trash. What if he saw her throw out a pair of his old shoes and they happened to be his favourite shoes and he took them out of the trash and he hid them? It's perfectly plausible. But there's um, three cases from 2023. I just want to bring to your attention. Let's start with this one. This is um, February 8th, Carroll County. Not Carroll County in Indiana. A different Carroll County. They shared information about a teenager who went missing in Westminster. This is um, Maryland, by the way. Please be on the lookout for a missing white male, approximately 16 years of age, with short brown hair, wearing tan sweatpants, a green long sleeve shirt and no shoes. He has been missing since approximately 8pm today and was last seen in the area of North Cranberry Road. And they located him around 3.30, so he's missing for several hours, safe and unharmed. So there's not much information about that one. There's also this one, a missing endangered 18-year-old with autism, last seen in St. George in Utah. Officials with St. George Police Department have asked for the public's help in locating a missing and endangered teen. They said Kevin Rugg, 18, was last seen in the area of 2200 East Dinosaur Crossing, on Monday 1pm, wearing green basketball shorts, a black shirt and no shoes. According to police, Kevin suffers with autism and functions at an eight-year-old level. So he was located unharmed. Now, this one has got more information and it's interesting that this is in the same area that Sebastian went missing. This is in Madison, in Tennessee. Youth services detectives are seeking the public's assistance in locating missing 10-year-old Kyle Crimmins Jr., 
who Thursday at 11.15am ran away from his home on Kemper Drive after an argument with a parent. Kyle ran into a wooded creek area behind his residence, wearing black pants, a grey t-shirt with no shoes, and believed to be in the area of Old Hickory Boulevard and Dickinson Pike in Madison. It took them 28 hours to locate him. He was near a creek. Presumably, he was drinking out of the creek. 28 hours with no food or water. He's going to head to a creek, but it was very close to his home. And they'd extensively searched for him. They had everything out looking for him. His father thought he caught sight of him in the woods. They carried on searching that area. Could not find him for 28 hours. They had helicopters, drones. They had bloodhounds. They had horses, ATVs. They had people trying to beat down the bush because this was in July of last year. Kyle Crimmins Jr. ran away from his home in Madison and into the woods after an argument with his parents on Thursday morning. Search crews were not able to find him in the brush and searched through the night into Friday morning. The search area was then expanded to nearby neighbourhoods and parks, including Cedar Hill Park. Police used helicopters, drones, ATVs and bloodhounds to look for the child and none of them found him. Metro Police called in the Davidson and some of the county sheriff's departments to help with the search. A lot of heavy wooded area, Brooke Rees said. Our helicopters do have some capabilities to be looking in wooded areas, but these tree lines here are just very dense. That definitely added to it as well as just some of the creek lines out here, ditches and things. The TBI had issued an endangered child alert for 10-year-old Kyle, found near a creek bed near his home, 3pm on Friday. Officers said they searched that area on Thursday, but did not find Kyle. They believe he went somewhere else and returned there shortly before being rescued. They posted a picture of Kyle looking well. Presumably, whatever argument it was was resolved but that was um good news obviously let's listen to this story about him being found and some good news tonight metro police have found kyle crimmins jr safe they tweeted this picture out of kyle in the back seat of a car police found him in the woods now yesterday kyle ran away from his home in madison police spent a large part of the day searching for him our danielle jackson joins us danielle i know you were in the neighborhood this afternoon this is such a huge relief to the community and all honestly all of us reporting yeah. this I'm just uh, glad all of our prayers were answered because we'd all been praying for him. A bright turn of events after a long search ended looking for a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> Cal Crimmins Jr. was found safe Friday afternoon. They really came in full force looking for him in every way they could. Law enforcement, including Metro Police search and rescue teams, the TBI and FBI searched around the neighborhood. The father of the juvenile was able to locate him uh, visually uh, yesterday around, uh, I believe it was around the two o'clock hour yesterday, uh, but lost him in the woods again. Ramping up search efforts again Friday using their helicopter, canine and horse patrol. The boy was found near Creek, not too far from his home. Found it very surprising to begin with, especially the age of the kid to hear that he ran away and didn't stay out overnight. That was really surprising, so kind of troubling. You know, but good thing they found him. So it was actually this Twitter account that put these stories together, Z News US. Jennifer Coffendaffer said this is interesting. Z News commented back, while no shoes does not equal foul play, it's absolutely concerning that Sebastian has still not been found. Most kids who left without shoes are found safe within a day or two. Though is a case from January. I believe she is still missing. Police still searching for 16-year-old, wearing no shoes. Texas Charm says, Notice, after an argument with parents, also found in a day, 46 days barefoot, is very different. It is indeed. We're into day 47 now. Sebastian's missing. And is it possible that he did run away and he hasn't been located because he either got out of the search area and they just haven't searched where he went or they've missed him? If a 10-year-old boy can evade searches for 28 hours, is it possible that Sebastian, at least in the early days, was evading the searches? And he's got himself totally lost. 
and out of the surgery. It's possible, you have to agree, it's possible if a 10-year-old can evade helicopters, drones, bloodhounds, horses, ATVs, people with sticks beating down the bush, and then be found in an area that they'd already searched. Maybe after 28 hours, he was ready to come home. <laughs> but... I don't know, you guys. You've got to consider the possibility that Sebastian could actually be a runaway. However, we also have to remember that 47 days is way different than 28 hours. We can't rule out the possibility of foul play. And law enforcement aren't either. Now, Nick Barris from News Channel 5 Nashville has uh, met with the district attorney and this is what the district attorney told Nick Barris. Well, I talked to district attorney Ray Whitley about what it might take to perhaps make an arrest. Experts say children rarely simply vanish completely on their own. Could others be involved in Sebastian's case? We have not cleared anyone, but we have absolutely no evidence to support foul play. Though they certainly do have theories, so what would it take to call this now a criminal investigation? General Whitley tells me there has to be something, physical evidence, blood, Sebastian's clothing, a flashlight, or security video, or an eyewitness implicating someone. But at this point, the simple fact is, there's nothing. But that's not to say that can't change, and General Whitley says he stays in contact with authorities, ready to prosecute if it does. Sumner County EMA Director Ken Widener says his crews are on call 24-7, ready to go when investigators contact them with new leads on potential evidence. And any time the Sheriff's Office indicates or TBI indicates where you've got an area of interest that we need to search, we go, we're ready to go. You can see the sophisticated mapping system showing the ground they've covered. Sadly, to date, no confirmed sightings and no indication whatsoever of what happened to Sebastian. Authorities still assume that Sebastian is alive and that he will be found safe. If that's not the case, then his body must be found. Without it or any other physical evidence, we may never know what happened to the teen. So they need evidence that there's foul play before they can even consider this to be a criminal investigation. And there's no evidence of it. Does it mean because there's no evidence of it that it didn't happen? No, no, because very good criminals don't get caught. So this case, to quote Leslie Earhart from the TVI, what she said several times about the Summer Wells case, this case is outside of the norm. This case, Sebastian's case, is another case in Tennessee that is outside of the norm and we're still none the wiser. But let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.